autism is a terrible condition. That paper that you're mentioning has been totally discredited. It was found to be fraudulent and is not the case. There have been dozens of studies of vaccines and the question of autism. Vaccines don't cause autism. They are highly effective and safe and are a good way to protect your children from vaccine preventable diseases. Mm -hmm. that, that article was just flat wrong. That's right. And that numerous studies have shown that it was wrong. That's right. And what happened to the, the author of the article? He lost his medical license. Because why? Because of the fraudulent behavior. Totally discredited. Nothing more to see here. Move along. But British court throws out conviction of autism vaccine MD, Andrew Wakefield's co-author, completely exonerated. Gastroenterologist Professor John Walker Smith won his appeal against the United Kingdom's General Medical Council Regulatory Board that had ruled against both him and Andrew Wakefield for their roles in the 1998 Lancet MMR paper, which raised the question about a link to autism. Justice John Minning ruled that the panel's determination cannot stand, therefore I quash it, he said. Its conclusions were based on inadequate and superficial reasoning in a number of instances, a wrong conclusion. The verdict restores Walker Smith's name to the medical registry and his reputation to the medical community. Now, we had Dr. Wakefield on the show recently, and this is what he had to say about his version of this. We listened to parents who said that my child was perfectly normal. I'm not anti-vaccine. I took my child to get vaccinated. When I did that, they got the MMR and they regressed into autism. And uh, they also developed gastrointestinal symptoms. And as a physician interested in gastrointestinal disease, I recommended those children should get investigated for that. They were investigated by the world's leading pediatric gastroenterologist at the time, Professor Walker Smith, who you've just mentioned, my co-author on the paper, and he found that they had an inflammatory bowel disease. We treated that disease. Not only did the bowel disease symptoms improve, but the behavioral and autistic symptoms improved. It was the beginning of a fascinating journey, but we had to investigate whether the parents were also right about whether the vaccine had precipitated in this. Where that's when the problem started. And so Murdoch's uh, brought his team of journalists along, Brian Deere. They came up with this extraordinary story uh, that we had involved ourselves in fraud and deception, that we had made it up, there was no ethical approval, all of this kind of thing, while at the same time holding back from the General Medical Council inquiry vital documents that showed there was indeed ethical approval for this study. He knew throughout the investigation and the proceedings mm. that he had in his possession key documents. That was an obstruction of justice. And here's an article from 2013 proving that Andrew Wakefield should have been exonerated back then. But, of course, we have to keep him out there as the boogeyman. We can't have somebody stepping in on Big Pharma's money-making machine. New published study verifies Andrew Wakefield's research on autism. Again, MMR causes autism. A December 13, 2012 vaccine court ruling, hundreds of thousands of dollars were awarded to Ryan Majabi, whose parents describe how the MMR vaccine causes severe debilitating injury to his brain diagnosed as autism spectrum disorder. Is there any scientific evidence that vaccines cause autism? No. Later the same month, the government suffered a second major defeat when Emily Moyer from Houston won compensation following a vaccine-related brain injury that once again involved the MMR and resulted in autism. And you could go down and read all the links for yourself. I encourage you to do it, okay? I'm just going to keep putting out this evidence as long as the mainstream media is pushing that vaccines are safe and effective and that people who don't vaccinate their children should be forced to. I'm not going to stop talking about this. They're very effective and they're very safe. Modern vaccines are safe. Modern vaccines are effective. Vaccine is safe and effective. And it is a safe form of flu vaccine. It's very effective in preventing the flu. Vaccines are important, safe, and effective. Vaccines are safe and highly effective. And They're saying by the year 2020, one in 10 children will be diagnosed with autism. Don't you want to know why? Have you ever thought about that? I mean, that's not the world that I grew up in. I, I was born in the 70s. Autism was a rare thing. You never heard about it. It wasn't until the late 80s that we started hearing about autism, right about the time the movie Rain Man came out, sort of like a predictive programming vessel to implant in you. Hey, if your kid gets autism, he might be pretty cool and be able to count things out and remember interesting facts and answer questions and be really good at music. You know, they don't tell you about all the other horrible things where he won't relate to society, you have to change his diapers regularly, he can't feed himself. 
uh, just all the other debilitating effects. No, they try to make it cool and trendy. Well, let's look at that right now. Here from Dynamic Chiropractic, an interesting study published in the Human Experimental Toxicology demonstrated a positive relationship between the number of vaccine doses given to infants and infant mortality rates. In other words, the nations with the highest amount of required immunizations had the highest infant mortality rates. For example, nations like Netherlands, Canada, Australia, and the United States, which require 24 to 26 vaccine doses, have the highest infant mortality rates. In contrast, nations like Sweden, Japan, Iceland, Norway, that average 12 required vaccine doses, have the lowest infant mortality rates. Ironically, the U.S. has one of the highest infant mortality rates out of 34 nations surveyed. A companion study also noticed a positive relationship between the number of vaccine doses and hospitalization rates of U.S. children. The researchers examined the records from the government's own vaccine adverse reporting system and found that the more vaccines a child receives in earlier life, the more likely the child was to suffer a reaction requiring hospitalization. Well, there you go. More money for big pharma because of more vaccines. It's a very devious program they're running here. David Kessler, a former FDA commissioner, estimated only 6% of all vaccine adverse events are reported. So that means 94% of these adverse reactions are parents that don't even know what's going on. Their kids throwing fits, having fevers, and they don't even report it. They just try to get through it. That has got to scare you. And here we go to the boom, EPA study. Autism boom began in 1988. Environmental factors are assumed. That's right. It has to be something from the environment. And maybe it is. Maybe it's those extra vaccines. In fact, from Mercola.com is the alarming rise in autism linked to 1988 event. The first conjugate vaccine against influenza type B, Hib, was approved for use in the U.S. in 1988, which coincides with the marked increase in reported prevalence of autism spectrum disorders among American children. Researchers hypothesize that the Hib vaccine may be in part responsible for this rise in autism as conjugate vaccines appear to have a profound impact on neurological development. These vaccines fundamentally change the manner in which the immune system of infants and young children's function, the authors of a recent study say. And if you look at a graph that shows autism, it's like this, real low, real low. It starts to rise a little bit in the 80s, probably due to the increased vaccine schedule. And then at the end of the 80s, boom, it starts shooting up. And now we're almost to one in 10. Doesn't that make you happy? We're gonna be number one in autism. I want to get to the end here. Uh, this is a, an article by Dr. Russell Blaylock, MD. We've had him on the show many times, retired neurosurgeon, just an expert on what goes on in the brain and what affects the brain. The danger of excessive vaccination during brain development. He published this in 2008. Okay, this is a thick article. Look at this. Very thick article. It's got sections like scientific double standards of vaccine safety, compelling link between autism and the vaccination program, the autism disaster, is it man-made? Immune dysfunction, the result of bystander damage. How immune reactions to vaccines differ depending on age. Autistic children more prone to develop autoimmune diseases and infections. Immune suppressions by live virus containing vaccines, which is almost every vaccine contains a live virus. Avoid the flu vaccine during pregnancy. Contrary to what they tell you now, you gotta get that flu vaccine. We gotta inject mercury into your baby. What about the adjuvants used in vaccines? I mean, this covers the entire study of what these vaccine ingredients and the live viruses themselves do to your brain and its development. You need to read this one if you read nothing else. And I wanna end this little vaccine extravaganza with a quote from Gandhi. Gandhi's anti-vaccine views ring true a century later. That's right, Gandhi was not a big fan of vaccines because he saw what they did to his people and they're still hurting his people today with the Bill Gates polio vaccine. Vaccination is a barbarous practice and one of the most fatal of all delusions current in our time. Conscientious objectors to vaccination should stand alone if need be against the whole world in defense of their conviction. 
And that's what I want you to do out there. If you feel like you're alone, just stand up. You will find others out there that are like you, others that don't want to bow down to this forced vaccination program. Because once they force vaccines, they could force drug you, then they could take your children away, then they could tell you where you're going to work, how you're going to work, what kind of house you're going to have, what kind of fuel you could burn in your fireplace, and then they're going to start rounding you up and killing you like cattle when they don't need you anymore. So you can't let government start now. You got to stop them in their tracks. So you need to support legislation out there and support congressmen and senators out there that are for parental choice because we should all have the choice whether we inject live viruses into our body or not. This has been Rob Dew with InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. Please spread this report around to everybody you know. I tried to make it the most comprehensive and as short as possible with our current uh, attention deficit disorder we have out there with all the people, myself included, I get a little scatterbrained. But please, spread this information. Make it go viral, okay? Make it go viral, get it out there. Let's change the way people think about vaccines because they're not safe and they're not effective, especially in the current way they're being used. And also, consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Your membership can be shared with up to 20 people at a time, so that's 20 people for the price of one, and it allows you to download the movies, download the special reports, put them on DVDs, put them on your access cable shows. Let's start informing people because there is a war for your mind and your soul, and it's happening right now, and you either get in the game or you will get run over by the New World Order. Thank you. Well, that's it for tonight's news. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're not a Prison Planet TV subscriber, please subscribe to that and support our operation. Your contribution helps to fund us. And of course, you can share that with up to 20 people. You can watch the news each night as it's happening and share all of Alex Jones's documentaries with those 20 people simultaneously. Join us again tomorrow night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. In the past decade, we have witnessed unparalleled scientific discoveries in the area of health. But no one has put together a formula that focuses directly on brain health, nerve growth factors, and optimizing your cellular energy at the same time. DNA Force is one of the most expensive formulas to produce. Some of the ingredients in DNA Force are $12,000 a kilogram. We are using the coveted, patented, only American source of PQQ, CoQ10, and more. You want the best that's out there at the lowest price anywhere? Well, we're bringing you a total win-win. The ultimate value, cutting-edge, trailblazing game changer that also supports the info war. We have produced a limited run of DNA Force, and it will take up to 12 weeks to produce more once we sell out. Secure your DNA Force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. DNA Force from InfoWars Life. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.